Hello everyone. This is a video for my art students and for my son. How are we gonna draw Link? My son was drawing this amazing human figure and I just, I was like, oh my God, this is awesome because it's so three dimensional and this is exactly what we're doing in my class. But then something interesting happened, right? As my son was drawing and he had a good start, he even made a grid, he stopped. And I said, why did you stop? And he said, it was hard to draw the hand. He did a pretty good job, but he felt like the hand wasn't coming out in space. Um, and then instead he drew Link's cool shield and master sword. Um, good job, Jacob, awesome. But I just had this epiphany how like kids veer away from drawing something that's like hard, like a human form. Cause like, it's just like, I don't know. I don't even know where to start. So um, in this video on how to draw Link, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try to break down the process and teach some drawing fundamentals. Here's my drawing. It's okay, I did it in like 45 minutes, um, but let me break it down for, me, for you. Here we go. So the first step um, when you're drawing, when you're approaching something as challenging as this, is to use your H pencil, well, sharp, and just figure out like just basic references, noticing how I'm moving around and just placing dots as I map out the head, right? So I'm not even thinking in line. I'm just like asking myself, okay, what are the angles? What's going on? Where is the hand in relationship to the head? So I'm kind of like making myself like a dot, dot, dot map. Um, and then very lightly, I'm putting in angles so I can make adjustments. Now, I want you to pay attention to when I'm making lines and when I'm making circles. Um, I'm going ahead and I'm thinking in angles primarily, but every once in a while, I'll give something a little bit of a curve or I will like draw a big ellipses. And I'm kind of like figuring out, okay, like asking myself this leg, you got to think like the leg is behind the shield. And one thing I think that like stops my son is it's kind of like, well, it, the, the, the sword doesn't look big. Well, anything that's big, like his knees or the shield or the sword, anything that's like coming out in space at the viewer should be bigger because it's like coming towards us. Um, step two, check angles and ellipses and reference points. So I've hardly even like worked into my drawing very much, but now I'm like, like, like looking at it and I'm like, okay, is everything right? You know, as I'm making these angles. Now I'm also like constantly moving around the page. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm like, is this in the right space in relationship to the shield? Um, how big is the hat? How much of the hat do I see? And this leads me to something very important. You have to constantly be looking at your photo. Right? Don't get lost in just looking at the drawing and drawing link from memory. Okay, refine details with a darker pencil. And now you're kind of like, okay, as you're thinking about the details, don't get lost in making it into like some super cool cartoon. Remember, the goal is that it's 3D. So you're always thinking, okay, where's the dark side of link? Where's the dark side of the head? Right? because you're getting graded on it being 3D. So my light's coming in from the right, so I'm gonna make sure the dark side of that hat is darker, right? As I'm kind of like mapping things out. The shoulder's looking funny to me, and I'm kind of like, oh, why? But if something's looking funny, don't get stuck. Keep moving around, and if you move around to another form, um, you'll kind of figure out what's off later. Now, how do we handle hands? Think of them as planes that are coming out in space like flat spaces, right? Or like um, 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 paws or pedals. Like you're not gonna think about the hand as a bunch of fingers, you'll drive yourself insane. Um, and then I'm making the hand bigger on purpose. I know that that sword's in the front, right? And the quality of the line tells the story of what's going on, right? So if a line's curvy, it tells me that something's curvy. If it's straight, it tells me it's straight and sharp. If it's bowing out, it tells me it's curvy. Now notice the curves that I use to help the knees make like appear to be spheres. So something that I think is so important in this drawing is like 
showing like these round parts like his hand and making his like knees like round so what i'm doing is i'm doing like these ellipses strokes right to make the knee come out like big dark dark shapes and you could check out my ellipses videos to help like just do drills but it's these curvy ellipses that are helping the the knee to draw like the line around the boot right now i'm thinking of the shoes the boots as blocks i'm not thinking of them as boots i'm thinking of everything as a form like i'm thinking of it as um cylinders right now i could get lost in the detail of the amazing master sword but i kind of stay away from that i just kind of block out basic shapes and i draw that curvy line so the shield is bowing out now again don't forget about light right? The goal is that to make this look human and 3D. So you always need to be thinking in value. Where are my lights? Where are my darks? And that includes line. Line has value. So I'm putting in these details, doing some brief measurements because the, the shield is coming out. So it should have some detail, but really focusing too on that shadow of the sword, right? So I'm thinking in lines, angles, but I'm constantly, then I'm thinking in values, right? You have to kind of like switch your brain. How are my values? How are my lines? How are my angles, right? Um, what direction should my lines be going in to tell the story of this, the form here and the form here? Now I'm like putting in some details, but I'm not getting lost in the details because I want to think like whole picture. Like I want to do everything at once instead of doing one area at a time. Um, certainly I'll zone into a specific area like this shadow area behind and underneath, right? Making the arm be 3D. Um, the, his left side is in shadow, so I'm putting that in, but I'm always moving around thinking in lights and darks. Clarify relationships. How is my piece reading? So as I'm doing this, I'm actually like drawing lines. I'm being like, okay, where's the arm in relationship to the foot? Right, and I'm noticing some shadows that I could have put in down at the bottom now that I think about it. Make sure you like put your shadows everywhere because I miss the shadows. I put some shadow, yeah, but I could have done the shadows at the bottom underneath him and I didn't even do that. I do it a little, but I could have emphasized it some more. Notice the directions of my line are telling me which direction his foot is going down. Um, so don't get lost in detail. Um, work must be finished in order to get credit, right? So make sure you're constantly moving and you're not getting like distracted. Bring down the background, right? And add additional lines to make something look 3D, to make something look like a three-dimensional sphere. And check out like additional videos to make sure you practice. And then self-assess yourself. Is my light source consistent? Does it feel like the light's coming from one side? Is this is this video game character um, link reading is three dimensional and then make sure you always bring down the background and you can do that as early as possible darken values do finishing touches constantly moving around and I want several key points where my eyes gonna go like his hat like his knees like his like his hands right and by darkening by darkening the values right? The highlights of his head will pop out. I'm not going to get lost in that crazy thing that he's standing on, right? That's going to drive me crazy. But that's the video. Good luck. Self-assess how your um, drawing, your 3D drawing is, and keep practicing. Do those basics, those ellipses, those lines, those shading techniques. Fill up your sketchbook.